Hello, I'm Tyler Berthsell. I'm the Paleontology Lab Manager for the Natural History Museum of Utah. And this guy right here is my favorite dinosaur, Parasaurolophus. And I'm going to tell you about this as I'm a researcher at the University of Utah who has dedicated my master's thesis to this magnificent dinosaur right here. So for me, what makes Parasaurolophus so special is this whole structure starting from the tip of the nose here going back behind his head and looping around is all his nose. Inside the bone here, we have a series of tubes, which I like to call tube technology. So you have the nostrils that start right here, and it goes up through a series of tubes all along the top of the crest here internally, hits the back right here, loops around, goes to about right here, and then it loops back around again to about midline in the crest, goes back through another set of tubes internally before it meets right back up at the beginning where it starts to go down to the windpipe, down the neck to the lungs. If you were to stack out the whole skeleton on this guy, he'd be about 40 feet long. He'd stand about 10 to 12 feet tall at the hips and probably weigh somewhere in that four to seven ton range. What is Parasaurolophus doing with this complex series of tubes in his nose? The two leading hypotheses are that this is used as a resonance chamber with all those empty tubes in there that it's resonating at different frequencies, almost like a, a trumpet or another wind instrument along that way. So if you have air passing through and resonating all those chambers, you'll get different sounds. And paleontologists have run air through models of these guys to produce different sounds that we think this dinosaur may have sounded like. Is if we look at CT scans right where their ear should be and into their brain case, their brains and their hearing canal is highly modified for to pick up low sounds, which is what the type of sounds that this crest would produce. Another hypothesis is with this series of tubes in there is that they're running blood vessels through their nose and they're using it to cool their blood to regulate their body temperature. We see certain modern day animals in the African Sahara that have modifications in their nose that do this as well. So that's another possibility. Another hypothesis that has been on the outskirts is that this whole nose system was used for smell. Again, we look at those same scans of the brain and where the nasal bulb would be right about here. And that suggests that smell wasn't a big deal for this dinosaur. So dedicating this whole structure to the sense of smell is probably not a good hypothesis for us. Other hypotheses that have fallen out of favor is originally they thought that this crest being the nose was maybe a snorkel system. One of the problems with that is why would you put your nostrils way down here if you want to use this as a snorkel here? The other thought was, well, maybe they trapped air in there and they used it as another breath as they are swimming in lakes and ponds. The problem with that is we don't see any muscle attachments or anything around the nose for them to close their nostrils to keep that airtight inside. And a lot of these theories were or hypotheses were used back in the day when they thought these animals were more aquatic. And we don't really have good evidence for that to show that they're aquatic. Another hypothesis that's a little more far-fetched is that since they have tubes on both sides, the left and right of their skull, is that maybe these were mixing chambers for volatile chemicals. And then when both chemicals met at the tip of the nose, they breathed fire, similar to something like bombardier beetles. <laughs> One of the reasons that I love Parasaurolophus so much and why I'm happy to be here at the University of Utah in the Natural History Museum is because Utah has the most of this dinosaur ever collected. Outside of Utah, there's seven known specimens of Parasaurolophus, and here in Utah, we're up to number 19. And I'm very lucky with all these skulls to start testing some of these hypotheses.